It's Hop Along Cassidy. With action and suspense, out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hop Along Cassidy. This famous hero thrills his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hopalong Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And appearing as that laughable old character, California, is Andy Clyde. Now to our story, The Man Who Made Willie Whirl. Hoppy's spurs at the moment are jingling down the boardwalk of Mescalero, heading for the dusty little town's biggest attraction, Frenchy Laverne's big casino dance hall. For something new has been added, a troupe of traveling actors who have brought new excitement to Mescalero's nightlife. Hoppy walks in, looking around, trying to spot California in the crowd milling about the place. Hey, California. Hoppy. Well, what's my bridges? You finally decided to come and take a look-see for yourself, huh? Now, California. Come on in. These acting dudes are a regular circus. They're over there near the runway, see? Hanging around Frenchy's gal, Dixie. Come on, I'll introduce you. Will you let go of my arm? I didn't come here to see any show. Show? They ain't giving no show. They're giving autographs. Autographs? Sure. The leading man for the next play, that young fella standing by Dixie, he's been writing his name on pieces of paper and passing them out. What for? Look, California. I'm getting dark circles under my disposition. Whatever it isn't, hop along, Cassidy. <laughs> Dixie's mm. waving at you. Hoppy, come over here. Drew, I want you to meet the best-looking, most famous cowboy in these parts. Hop along, Cassidy himself. Hoppy, this is Drew Mansfield of the Avon Players. Aye, a pleasure, I'm sure. Hoppy's the one who should be giving out autographs. <laughs> well, I mean it. <laughs> Why not? Here's my pen, Mr. Cassidy. Do you mind? Yes, I do. Come on, California. Oh, go on, Hoppy. You're a right. Hoppy for me. I want it. Okay, okay, if you want to be foolish. He's doing it. <laughs> there. There. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Right. How about this? Hey, wait a minute. There you are. Hoppy, Hoppy, uh, wait for me. Uh, where are you going? Uh, say, what's the rush? Now, hold on. Ah, uh, shucks. Dixie didn't mean no harm. Uh, you're going to see her in the professor's show next week? The professor? Sure. Stratford Bardwell, he calls himself. The boss actor. Uh, a skinny old goat in velvet pants. Oh? Yeah, you should have seen him cry in his beer. Frenchy told him he couldn't use the Opry House unless Dixie was playing, uh, uh, Juliet. Juliet? You don't mean... Oh, no. Ho, ho, ho. Not Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, yeah. Come to think of it, that's what I hear them call it. Uh, by some fella uh, named uh, Willie... Uh, uh... William Shakespeare. Yeah, that's right. Uh, How do you know? Ha, 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 ha. Shakespeare and Mescalero. <laughs> Cassidy. Huh? Who's that? Oh, Joe Gregory. Hi. I didn't see you there in the dark. I... What's the matter? I kind of figured you'd be dropping around here. I've been thinking over what you told me yesterday in the hills. I told you. Think I didn't recognize you, huh, Cassidy? Just because you wrapped your bandana around your face? Now, hold on. Well, I'd recognize your voice anywhere. Or you even wearing the same clothes and riding the same white horse. How dumb do you think I am? I don't know what you're talking about. Why, this coyote's been eating local weed. So you don't know what I'm talking about, huh? You don't even remember telling me to leave my money at the foot of Red Mesa either, do you? I never figured you was the kind of try blackmail, Cassidy. Blackmail? I've been going straight for a long time trying to make good ramrod in the flying X, and now just because of you and your threat... I, I, I... Gregory's hit. You take care of him, California. I'm going after that shooting hombre. Joe Gregory stops Hopalong outside Frenchy Laverne's dance hall and accuses him of blackmail. A shot rings out some distance away, and Joe falls, badly wounded. 
Hoppy leaps on his horse and goes after the gunman while California carries Joe to Doc Radcliffe's place nearby. California is returning to the hitching rail in front of the dance hall as Hoppy returns from the chase. Hoppy, did you get the snake? Uh, no, I doubled back. How's Gregory? Uh, he's hurt mighty bad, Doc says. You mean you let that dry gulcher get plumb away? No, I wounded him before I lost him in the darkness. Heard him yelp. Then I found this on the ground where he dropped it. A carbine. Mm, that's some mighty fancy shooting iron. All engraved there. Look at here. Yeah, I already noticed that, California. There's only one man I know who owns a custom-built carbine like that. Who? Frenchy Laverne. Why, the pole cat. Why did he want to bushwhack Joe Gregory, you suppose? I said it was Frenchy's gun. I didn't get close enough to tell who it was. It could have been Frenchy. But if it wasn't, he might be able to tell us who's been using his gun lately. Come on. Uh, hey, where are you going? Frenchy's office is inside here above the dance hall. I know, but the way I'm feeling right now, I'd rather drop in unannounced. Come on. The back stairway is around this way. See anybody in that window? No, the room's empty. Try the door. It ain't locked. Good. We're going in. Jumping bullfrogs. This here's the most elegant room I ever seen. Look at all them leather chairs, the pretty pictures, and the doodads in the wall. Yeah. Mighty fancy, all right. I'll just lay the carbine on the desk, right beside that roll of bandages. Huh? Yeah, yes, sir. He must have got that bullet hole plugged up right here in Frenchy's office. Say, uh, look at this here box full of bottles of medicine. Yeah, Frenchy's emergency kit. He's got everything in there. Yes, sir. Iodine, carbolic, clo... Clo... What's this? Chloral hydrate. What kind of medicine's that? That stuff is medicine the same way a blackjack is. It's the technical name for knockout drops. Yeah? What's it doing here? What are you doing here? Uh, uh, Frenchy. <clears throat> That's the question, gentlemen. We're waiting for you, Laverne. And returning something I think belongs to you. That carbine. Oh, Oh, I see. Thank you. I'm glad you recognized it. Do sit down. I'll stand if you don't mind. <laughs> I don't mind. What's troubling you? You see this sleeve? Your sleeve? Oh, you mean that hole in it? Two holes. One where the bullet went in and the other where it came out. Uh, uh, what the... Uh, Take it easy, uh, California. I wasn't hit. You see, Frenchy? Joe Gregor was standing in front of me. The man who fired that shot from your gun was standing directly behind me. All he could see was my back. A bullet passed between my arm and body. Jumping, Jehoshaphat. It must have been you he was shooting at, not Gregory. Exactly. You seem to be in good shape, Frenchy. So I know the man I winged out there wasn't you. If I wanted to kill a man, I wouldn't waylay him in the dark. You can be sure of that. No, you'd hire somebody else to do it for you. Wouldn't you? Mm. <laughs> Come, let's not be offensive. Remember, I had every excuse to kill you just a few seconds ago when I found you prowling around here. Legally, you are burglars. However, I changed my mind. Then you admit it was one of your boys who tried to kill me? I admit nothing. But if you're interested, there are six of them on guard outside the door I just entered. I see. And I don't suppose you have any idea how these bandages come to be on your desk. No idea. <laughs> I've been out all evening. Oh, really, Cassidy, you're coming here like this? <laughs> the only reason you're still alive is I decided I could use a man like you. Anyone smart enough to run a successful blackmail racket is smart enough to help me run this town. Hey, Cassidy, I'll cut you in on everything. Good night, Frenchy. Uh, that's your answer. Yeah, and if you're thinking of calling in your men who are waiting outside the door, forget it. Not at all. <laughs> Nothing is going to happen to you in here. Well, we'll keep the herd up here on high ground for a couple of weeks, California. The grass is better. Yeah. yeah. Looks like the boys are having trouble. Yeah, that bunch way ahead there trying to run down the bluff to low ground again. I... Hold it. Huh? Way down there past the foot of the bluff. Those two riders. 
Well, I'll be darned. Ain't that Dixie in the paint? Yeah, and a man on a white horse. Can't recognize him from this far off. Look at him, riding hand in hand. Uh, now they're stopping. Huh? Hey, he's uh, kissing her. Yeah. Well, well, what do you know? Must be Frenchy Laverne. It had better be Laverne. If it isn't, Dixie's liable to have trouble. <laughs> there he goes, riding off by himself. So I see. He's just leaving her there. Maybe it ain't Laverne, and whoever it is don't want to be seen riding back into town with Dixie. Uh, 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 Hoppy, uh, looks like that bunch is trying to stampede over the bluff. Go on ahead and help turn them. If they get over, they'll run down the girl. Sure. I'd better go hit her off. Hold on a minute, Miss Renee. Hold on. What's the matter? Boys are trying to head off a stampede down that bluff. Oh? Well, sounds like they got everything under control now. But you better wait a while. I, I didn't know any of you boys were working cattle up there. If they stampede down that bluff, they're liable to... I mean, there's somebody riding up ahead. Oh, you'll be all right. Oh. Uh, you saw him? Well, I saw somebody. Copy. Yeah? You saw my eyes aren't too sharp, Miss Renee. Can I depend on that? Of course. It's none of my business. Well, if you and Laverne want to go riding together, what's wrong with it? After all, he's been very good to you, Miss Renee. Buys you lots of things. So and... what? I don't owe Frenchy Laverne a thing. Not a thing. Why should he... Oh, Hoppy, don't call me Miss Renee. We're friends. We are, aren't we? Of course. What's bothering you, Miss Renee? Laverne. I hate him. I wish I'd never laid eyes on him. I wish I'd never come here. I hate it. This dirty little mud hole of a town. Well, why don't you leave if you feel that way about it? If I only could. If I only... Laverne can't keep you here. No. No, of course not. Hey, it looks like California's heading this way with... Where? Oh, I'd better be gone. Bye. Hey, Hoppy! Hi, Hoppy. Well, I see you brought company with you, California. Hi, Sheriff. Howdy. This is a surprise. I figured it might be. This blamed old fool says he's going to arrest you. What? Kind of hot for a joke, isn't it? It ain't no joke, Cassidy. You're under arrest. What for? Blackmail and extortion, among other things. I've been trying to tell the old walrus. That... Hold on, California. Who says I blackmailed them? Three ranchers in the territory who've had the gumption to come to the law about it. How many's keeping their mouths shut uh, wouldn't be known. I never would have thought this of you, hop along. No, sir, I never would. Blackmail's a coward's game. I agree. What evidence have you got? Plenty. Among other things, a blackmail note to old man Jenkins, the boss of the Ten Star Spread, threatening to tell his wife about that gal in Abilene if he don't pay off. You gonna deny you signed this? Go on, take a good look. Uh, well, it sure does look like my signature, all right. If, it ain't, if, if that's I... not enough, Cassidy, there's one other charge. It happens that Joe Gregory died this morning. I'm charging you with murder. on a charge of blackmail and murder, Hoppy is locked up in jail at Mescalero to await trial. It's a little after high noon and the sun beats down on the adobe calaboose, making the sheriff mighty uncomfortable as he waits for the jailer to come and take over. I uh, sure wish that jailer would hurry back from dinner. It's so dag blasted hot in here. All right, Sheriff. Uh, California. <laughs> if you want to see your pal, he's in that third cell over there. Hey, what's that you got? Oh, a bucket of suds from the bar room across the street. I mm. thought Hoppy might like something to cool off with. Howdy, Hoppy. I brought you something. So I heard. You know I don't drink that stuff. Why couldn't you have brought me some sarsaparilla or just plain water? Well, if you don't want it, I might as well toss it out into the street. I ain't thirsty myself, and... Uh... Hey, hold up there a minute, California. Spilling that beer on a day like this would be plum sinful. If he don't want it, I sure can use it. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, I didn't think of offering it to you. Uh, now, go ahead and drink it if you want. <laughs> Thanks. Good, huh? Oh, 
but sure hits the spot. That's fine. Say, is that a checkerboard you got here? Sure, drag up a chair. I'll teach you how to really play checkers. <laughs> you teach me, huh? <laughs> Go on, set them up. Yeah, just as soon as I finish this. I wish it had held more than just a quart. Which color pieces you, you like? White or black? Oh, it don't make much difference, I reckon. I'll beat you either way. <laughs> well, I, I'll take the white. Uh, set them up. Uh, sure is hot. Yeah, uh, making you sleepy, huh? Yeah, it sure does. I, funny, I feel so... Uh, What's the matter, Sheriff? Well, I, I don't know. I, my eyes, I, I can't... Tell the black pieces from the white. Don't. Hey, what happened? What's wrong with the sheriff? Hold your horses while I find these keys. There. What happened? What do you do? Oh, that beer. <laughs> I thought you'd gone crazy bringing me beer. Hot crazy, huh? <laughs> And you took those knockout drops from Frenchy's office. Yeah, I figured they might come in handy sometime. Now we get a chance to track down the polecat who's doing you dirt. Evening, Laverne. Huh? Oh. Oh, crawling up my back steps again, eh, Cassidy? Oh, I noticed the door was open. Yes, I was cooling off. Sit down. I talk better standing. <laughs> drink? No? <laughs> I hear you don't mind serving drinks. The whole town's talking about that Mickey you fixed for the sheriff. But they're not laughing, Cassidy. Joe Gregory was a good man. The boys don't like his being murdered. If you come here looking for protection... I don't need protection, Laverne. All I need is evidence on who really killed him. And you're the one who can supply it. What kind of evidence would you like? The truth. That your gunman missed me and killed Gregory by mistake. <laughs> oh, don't be childish. Do you really expect me to admit that? No, Cassidy. You should have known better than to reject my offer. Now you can stew in your own juice. <laughs> you know, Laverne, it's a funny thing. Nearly all these blackmail victims were threatened with a revelation of information which only you might have. Either that or... Or what? Or someone working for you. One of those dance hall girls, for instance, whose job includes making the customers buy drinks. A girl might do quite a job getting some of the boys drunk enough to blab all their troubles and secrets and then pass on the information to a confederate who might uh, make use of it. Really building up a case for yourself, aren't you, Cassidy? All you have to do is find the confederate. It could be you. Nice try, but it won't work. I didn't say it was you. I just said it could be. Could be almost any man one of those girls might go for. A girl who'd help that hombre make a fast dollar in the hope that they both might be able to pull out of here in style. What are you getting at? Oh, I'm just reaching, Laverne, trying to find an answer. You see, I don't like being framed. You don't, huh? If you're innocent, you might help me. Get out. I will, but think it over, Laverne. Think it over. Why are we sneaking around here back to the crowd? I don't want nothing here but the stable. I know. I don't want to wake the stable boy sleeping there. Remember, I'm a wanted character. What you looking at? Is the horse's leg hurt? No, oh, not that. It just looked like... Oh, it's nothing. Let's go on in. I still don't know why we... Dixie Renee and those actors are rehearsing inside. I want a word with her. This door in back is the only one that's open. Come on. It's never felt a wound. Let's go. What light through yonder window, please? Oh, no, 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 please, Mr. Mansfield. Shh, come on. I don't know what we're going to do. It's dark. Let's get where we can watch the stage. I beg, I plead. Act. Do not orate. How many times must I tell you? All right, Mansfield, take it from him. He jests at scars. He jests at scars that never felt a wound, but soft. What light through yonder window, please? It is the east. No, no, no. Oh, for Pete's sake, Professor. That sounded perfectly fine. What's wrong with it? What is wrong, she asks. 
You can be forgiven, Miss Rene. You are a dancer. But Mansfield, he's supposed to be a professional. I resist that. You do. And what of the Bard? What of Shakespeare? He is whirling in his grave. You won't do, Mansfield. Miss Rene, I plead with you. Who is going to play Romeo? And if you don't like I it... I submit my resignation immediately. But immediately. Well, goodbye. Oh, this is too much. Too much. Back here in the shadows, California. Stratford Bard, well, who have directed Edwin Booth, cannot possibly stomach this amateur. Don't mind him, Dixie. He's a temperamental old cuss. And what of the Bard? What of Shakespeare? He is... Whirling in his grave. Oh, hey, oh, hey, listen to Mansfield imitate the professor. That drew Mansfield sure can act. Yeah, he sure can. And this is one performance I won't forget. Come on, let's get out of here. The rehearsal's over. We don't have to be quiet no more. He's gone. Huh? The stable boy's gone. I, I say he's gone. Yeah, so he is. I only hope he didn't leave to go after that. That's just what he did. Uh, uh, the oh, sheriff. Old beer, huh? It's about time you learned that this town don't take to escape murderers. Let me have those guns. But if you'll just wait until the actors come out from the rehearsal, I think I you can find out who's responsible. Get on your horses and no funny stuff. Who's going to direct the play, though? We Look. Get along about Professor Bartlett. I think Drew's a wonderful hero. They're coming out now. If I can just... guns in your ribs, say you get moving toward the jailhouse. But there'll be more trouble. Not if I keep... <laughs> What in blazes? It's Frenchie! Watch out, Drew! You played your last love scene with Dixie. Drop that gun, Frenchie! Ah. What the... Quiet! <laughs> quiet, everybody! Quiet! Look at him. I had to do it. He was going to kill me. I saw it all. Be quiet. He's, he's dead. Frenchie is dead. I'll handle this. <laughs> now, let me see. Yeah. I guess he is. All right, get back, folks. I, I didn't want to kill him. The sheriff saw it all, Drew. It was the only thing you could do. Can I up here, Sheriff? Uh, you be quiet, Cassidy. So ain't much happening. I don't know what to do first. You stay right here where I can keep an eye on you. Well, don't you think you'd better tend to Drew's wound first? Drew, are you hurt? No. No, not at all. Here, let me see there. Did Frenchie wing you? No, nothing. Nothing, I tell you. I... I'll take Dixie home now and get her away from all this. Sheriff, are you going to stand here and let the blackmailer and murderer get away? I sure ain't. I'm taking you in right now. I'm talking about Drew Mansfield. He killed Joe Gregory and he's been impersonating me. Why, you dirty... I ought to... If you're so innocent, why don't you let us tend to your arm? Because I'm not hurt, I tell you. For a man who's not wounded, there's sure a lot of blood dripping down your sleeve. Here, let me cut the sleeve open with my knife. No! What's the matter, Drew? What have you got up your sleeve? Why couldn't you leave me alone, Cassidy? Sure, I'll let you get away, and then I'd take the rap for all you've been doing. Well, if this ain't the dag blamedest thing I ever seen, Drew has on another suit of clothes under his regular ones. Yeah, and that underneath suit of clothes is just like Hoppy. You're all trying to frame him. I tell you, Frenchie was a guilty man. That's not very sporting of you, Miss Renee, trying to pin guilt on your dead boyfriend. I've never forgotten that autograph you asked me for, and then turned it into a blackmail note. But he tried to kill Drew. He was tired of your two timing. I realized it was Drew that you met in the canyon. That day he was riding a white horse with black stockings. But the night when I was in the stables, I noticed his horse had his black stockings painted over with white calcium. Well, I'll be darned. That's what you stopped to look at. Yeah. He made his horse look all white like Topper. And then he could pretend he was you. This is the dirtiest frame-up I've ever seen. There's not a word of truth to any of it. Those protests seem a little feeble, Drew. Hop along. Kind of looks like I owe you an apology. All right, come along, Drew oh. Mansfield. You played your last big scene. Why, well, golly, Hoppy, how do you always figure these things out? Well, I knew I was right when I heard Drew impersonate the professor tonight. He could impersonate me just as well. Yeah, I understand about that and about the horse, but how in tarnation did you ever guess that Drew had done another suit underneath these regular clothes? Well, I noticed that his clothes seemed awfully bulky. Too much so for this hot weather. So I deduced that he had double-dressed. Huh? Double dress? Uh, that's a term actors use. They can quickly take off the top layer and have another complete suit underneath. Well, uh, how did you know? <laughs> I once played both the angel and the devil in a Sunday school play. Oh, Harvey. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Good.
Goodbye from Hopalong Cassidy and California. These partners will be riding out again soon into a threatening episode of Range War, and we hope you'll be with us. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. The Man Who Made Willie Whirl was written by Irvin Ashkenazi. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. Hey, hey, hey.